In this video, we are going to look about a basic and an important technique in microbiology, which is gram staining. So, first of all, aim of this technique is to differentiate bacteria into two groups based on their cell wall composition. Coming into the history, this technique was introduced by or discovered by Hans Christian Bell. Uh, no, no, Hans Christian Gram. So, from the scientist name, they named this technique as uh, gram staining. He is a Danish scientist, and this technique was found in 1884. How did he find this technique? So he found this technique while examining the lungs tissue of pneumonia affected patients. The there is a final step called adding safranin. So this technique, this uh, step was not uh, done by Graham uh, and uh, Christian Graham. This step was later added by another scientist called Carl Wegret. Okay, so this uh, Graham staining is also called as differential staining. So now in this video, let's check about the materials required and the procedure to do this Graham staining in detail. Now let's check out the principle of this technique. On what basis we are doing this technique is we are categorizing bacteria into two types. One is gram positive bacteria, another is gram negative bacteria. So what is this gram positive bacteria? They have a thick peptidoglycan layer, which is nothing but a, we call it a cell wall. So and there won't be any outer membrane covering over this peptidoglycan layer. So they can retain the primary strain, which we use as a crystal violet, and appears blue or purple. Coming to the gram negative bacteria, they have they have a very thin peptidoglycan layer and there will be outer membrane called the LPS, lipopolysaccharide membrane. So they cannot retain the primary strain which is crystal violet and stained by counter strain which is another strain which we use is safranin. So they appear red or pink in color. So this is the base principle we use in this technique. So gram positive bacteria have thick peptidoglycan layer and gram negative bacteria have thin peptidoglycan layer plus outer membrane. So these are the differentiating factor which we explore in this technique. So important materials required for this technique are first four important reagents which are crystal violet, our primary strain, iodine which we call as mordant and third is a decolorizer which is made up of acetone or alcohol 95 percentage and fourth is safranin which we call as counter strain or secondary strain. Apart from this four reagent we need a Bunsen burner, inoculation loop uh, to make a uh, spear preparation and the glass slides, beakers with the water so that we will run off the water and then gloves to, so that we can prevent uh, staining our hands. So these are the important materials required. Now coming to the procedure of this technique, uh, first of all we have to prepare a bacterial smear. I have already made a, a video on preparing bacterial smear so you can check it out for uh, easy understanding. Uh, to make it in simple words, we will take a glass slide and we will uh, put 2-3 drops of water and then we will pick a colony of bacteria using inoculation loop and we will just make a smear. So smear is nothing but a, a flat round thin layer. So we will make a thin layer of uh, that bacterial smear and then uh, we will heat it up to to make it uh, dry and thin. First step of this technique is to add crystal violet which is our primary strain and we will pour it uh, crystal violet and leave it for one minute. After the one minute we will wash it with uh, water and uh, second step is to add iodine and we will wait for one minute. So uh, adding iodine also we will wait for one minute and then wash it again with the uh, water. Third step is the most crucial and important step which we have to be very careful adding alcohol or acetone which is decolorizer for 10 seconds. Just we have to pour the alcohol or uh, decolorizer for 10 seconds so that it will uh, take off the um, primary strain from a gram negative bacteria and then uh, fourth step is uh, again we have to wash it with water after adding our alcohol or decolorizer. Last fourth step is to add safranin which is our counter strain and wait for one minute. So after that uh, we will wash it with water and our bacteria will be stained either in pink or red or uh, uh, gram positive bacteria will be blue or violet color and the gram negative bacteria will be in pink color, pink or red color. So, so this is the overall procedure for gram staining. So what are the factors which can influence this uh, result of this gram staining are first is uh, culture age. If uh, a bacteria which is inoculated is too old, if you stain it in gram staining means then uh, the result might be a little different. It won't show a perfect uh, uh, gram positive or gram negative because its cell wall might be very weak and it won't be uh, easy to differentiate. Second is media. So based if uh, we use any, any differential media, we take colonies from any differential media, then the color might be a little different. 
Third is the incubation atmosphere, where we incubate our sample might also influence our gram staining result. And fourth is staining technique. So some people might use 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. So different lab use a different timing for their reagent use. So this might also influence the result. But standard time is one minute, one minute, one minute is advisable. So what's the purpose of this technique is to identification of bacteria, whether it's gram positive or gram negative, helps in choice of antibiotics. So some antibiotics will be acting on gram negative bacteria only so to whether to know whether the bacteria is gram negative or positive and that we will be using different choice of antibiotics and third is determines uh, specimen quality so and last is selection of culture media so based on the uh, gram positive or gram negative we can choose which media we can provide and to enrich their growth so these are the uses of this gram staining technique so coming to the limitations there are some limitation in this technique also first of all it is only for bacterial staining we can't stain fungi or yeast or protozoa or other type of organism this is purely for bacterial staining in that also there are some bacteria like mycoplasma or mycobacteria these can't be stained in gram staining uh, uh, properly so we use uh, another staining technique called acid for staining technique so in that only we can stain these kind of bacteria and lastly like there might be over usage or uh, under usage of uh, some reagents might also influence the result of this gram staining so we have to be very careful on using the reagents so these are the limitations so at last in this video we learned about an uh, important and a basic technique in microbiology which is gram staining so its aim its history its uh, principle procedure uh, usage and uh, advantages disadvantages everything we have looked about that's all